Luke 12, 48. Something along the lines of, of much that is given, much is expected. Welcome to the Laneiverse. Like, consider liking. Um, subscribe if you vibe. Share with love. Comment wisely. And if you're not going to do it wisely, we don't do we don't do that around here. You will not be acknowledged. Go go find somebody else to give you the attention your parents and more than likely women won't <laughs> won't ever give you because you don't deserve it. Go into positive things, right? In today's log, I'm getting into my the, what is it the the artist to visionary project executive pipeline. How I am embodying being the Alexander Hamilton of the cannabis industry. Of course, I get distracted by a fucking squirrel. Perfect. <laughs> but, um, and what else? Being from Baltimore, just like lessons, where I'm at right now, how things are going with the channel, what you can expect. I'm going to keep my ting brief. So as your resident hot divinity i know the the pimples the skincare ain't and giving hot but it's it's a lifestyle it's an aura i'm her though so in the realm of this hot divinity i am just going through with these astrologicals you know we in mercury and mercury <laughs> mercury and gatorade <laughs> Retrograde, we had Lions Portal, Full Moon is tomorrow. And this has been illuminating things, shedding things um, to really embody what my 10 year plan is where there's no like internal conflict. Because uh, you get to, you start leveling up. It's not just about finances. It's not about just the physical. It's about the spirit. It's about all aspects, spiritual, spiritual, emotional, mental. When we talk about the physical, it's like the body, really. It's just, it's always been like, these years have been full of unpleasant surprises. <laughs> that I've been realizing, right? So this could be a lesson as far as if there are certain things you're struggling with, you gotta, you gotta get into your body. You gotta feel it. You gotta feel where it is. And then also start inspecting your bloodline, your DNA, the things that, the culture, all the things that you may have inadvertently absorbed, especially during formative years that are still leaving a lasting impression on how you navigate things. And some of that can even be just like epigenetics where trauma can be passed down for lifetimes for different family lines, your bloodline, everything. Just like certain gifts that you have, certain traits that you have, certain illnesses can pass down through DNA. Same thing can happen with Unresolved issues, like full transparency. I've been making myself as far as realizing that many of the issues that I've had, especially when they pop up in intimate relations and my relationships with other people come from just certain things that were just unspoken. And realizing that I am embodying habits and behaviors that I don't want to be a part of me and figuring that shit out. So as I've been clearing that out, figuring out my long-term plans, we get into the crux of how I began this episode. So this is definitely like an art YouTube, but it's something I'm... The art is what I'm working towards. Like right now, I'm doing art as self. Who you are is a masterpiece. Who you choose to show up as. Even, you know, something as simple as keeping your home clean. How you lay out things. How you dress. 
how you choose to have conversation, do business. All of that is an art in that these are things you have to develop over time and that you'll gradually improve with. And it's going to be messy and there's much to learn and to put into practice with. So when it comes to like visual art and illustration, animation, those are things that I am treating like a hobby. Those are my crafts that I do want to build into something greater. But it's also like that's tied to my old identity and how I have navigated most of my life until this point. So it's kind of like, eh, need some space. I need some space from it. To explore myself and my interests in just different ways. Thus, project management. Life is full of projects. And I, you know, we get into, again, the topic of DNA and inheriting certain things. My dad is like a very, I guess he's organized. When he's helped me move, for better or worse, he is like very meticulous about stacking things. <laughs> Not, I don't know that he, he's been a very um, blue collar kind of worker, laborer throughout his life. So just that hands-on element, even though I'm not actually hands-on with doing project management and putting in software and stuff, there is like an art to the team cohesion and figuring out like the time spans, like the time boxes to get certain tasks done, establishing certain dates for completion, just all this kind of shit that I've just gravitated to. And inevitably just became a part of how I just do freelance work for clients I've been doing for the past five plus years where I've been using a project or work management system called Asana to lay these things out before I even knew it was like a career path or really an option. And I think it ties into being a director. So we get into... I am a visionary project executive in the cannabis industry. How? Why? Because I decided it. (laughs) And because I see at the end of the day, like entrepreneurship, business, people get into all the mumbo jumbo jargon, bullshit and super serious nonsense of this made up malarkey. It's solving problems for people and being of a high enough value or being able to scale that. That's it. So my equation to the problems of the cannabis industry where there are cash flow, and I keep hearing all these motherfuckers crying about there not being money while there's also news about billions of dollars being made. I'm just like, look, y'all need to start sourcing your money from other sources. Like other than just selling this plant product, this commodity where the prices are getting marked up because of just all the infrastructure, the regulations, the requirements, the fees, the everything, the lack of direct funding, the lack of loan access. Look, bitch, we got to figure out some other fucking way to make this goddamn money. So my thing is I've been in the, the stratosphere of like print on demand, digital products, And just monetization strategies, which is like, you have to, that's just the equation to wealth anyway, is you need multiple income streams, whether it's a business or a fucking, yeah, just an individual person. You can make but so much money in one method. The way you accrue more money and make assets is by creating new income streams and building upon that. So that's my approach. And really, my whole thing with taking a step back as an artist is because I need fucking money. And I want big money because there's just a lot of shit I want to get done and I want to have ownership of. So that has shaped my outlook in I'm focused on developing the art of making money, the art of project management, the art of 
executing a vision, a profitable vision that is that has staying power. So we get into Alexander Hamilton and how that fits into this. Um, Because I started watching it because I used to listen to the um, soundtrack. I love that shit. And just on a whim, I decided to start watching it on um, Disney Plus. And I was just in a different place when I first listened to the album versus me tapping into the music now. So what hits is that Alexander Hamilton, at least presented in the musical, is very ambitious, brilliant, shoots off at the mouth, <laughs> and is navigating his world, navigating his way through a world after dealing with so much tragedy and being called to embody the greatness that he feels within himself and that other people have felt within him. And that circles back to the Luke 1243, 1248. I'm not Christian. I ain't never going to claim that shit. But I'm into whatever's divine, spiritual. I gather information, resources. It all comes from the same source. It just kept coming up in me of much that is given, much is expected. And that does reflect in my life where... I have been given a lot. Even right now, I'm being given a lot. People give me plenty. And I guess the same thing with Alexander Hamilton. You, It's not just you're being given things for no reason. It's people can feel that there's greatness in you. I don't know. Even for me, if I pick up on the potential in somebody, I want to see them succeed. And... You know, my college was paid for. My trips to Japan have been paid for. My parents have gone to Hawaii. They paid for me to go to Hawaii. I come from a high middle class household. And that said that the money didn't replace the internal nurturing that I needed. But that is my responsibility as I've realized, and really what I was trying to tap into throughout just my life, just that I had this awareness as a kid, but just the environment seemed pressed to suppress that, and I didn't, I just didn't feel like I could have the fight in me to keep pushing against authority figures, my peers, everybody and everything around me telling me what I can't and can't do, can and can't do. Thus, to me, I couldn't fucking deliver on everything that is expected of me. Because then you're expecting the impossible from a broken kid and a broken individual that you're then trying to convince is not broken. And it's just a wash. So I keep thinking from that scripture and that saying, like, that's that's not the exact scripture. That's just the words that keep coming to me or repeat to me. But what keeps coming to mind is I can't remember. Maybe one of you could tell me if you know the My Hero Academia episode. I forget the context. Maybe it was like season two. But when Deku is saying that there's much that is expected of him and he wants to honor everything that everyone like All Might, his mother, his peers, Aizawa sensei. My hero, the hero academia, uh, UA, he understands that he must honor what has been given to him, the chances that have been bestowed upon him. And again, just circling back to Alexander Hamilton, there is a song that has really resonated with me called History Has Its Eyes on You, where George Washington is saying, you know, history has its eyes on me, and he imparts to Alexander, there's greatness in you, and I'm giving you this chance. Just know history has its eyes on you. Show out. That's not meant to be, and I used to be intimidated by it, but now I see it as an invitation to be, to just show up completely as myself and anything that stands in the way of that is up to me to tear that down and again even just looking at the cannabis industry and how dismal the shit gets uh 
it's it's the same situation where the musical is about America's independence from Britain. Of course, give or take, America's a messy place. We got all these fucking problems. There are flaws in where this country, you know, in which, how this country was founded. But at the end of the day, America secured its independence against all odds. And really, even when we get into black history, the African diaspora, anybody who has fought for independence, despite the cynicism, despite the odds, history had their eyes on us to make the breakthrough. And I don't like that's even getting back to My Hero Academia. I love the series so much because of the level of optimism. I became a cynical, depressed, pessimistic person as a reflection of my environment. There are people who like one of my friends I was talking, he like had bet against Kamala winning. And I'm just because he's like, uh, she it's not going to work out. And I'm just like. If you're not going to have hope, you cannot expect change. And he's like, are you on your all might bullshit? Damn right I'm on my all might bullshit. Because that's literally, you cannot expect change and be, be down here at the status quo, doubting everything, complaining that you want changes. That's, it's not going to work. Frequency, vibrations, whatever the fuck. It's, it's not a match. It's incompatible. If you want this, you have to rise up to be level with it or at least have it in your spirit that you are going to push and develop into what you have put up here. There is no pedestal. You are the pedestal. And really, it's just like, I remember when Obama was elected. I remember not even the election or the election cycle. I've yeah, when Obama was elected, I was in college. I went to the University of Maryland. I'm living on South Campus. I'm watching with my roommates. He won. You know, we feeling good. And then I just hear chanting outside, Obama, Obama, Obama. And I'm just like, what? And I go outside and there's just hundreds of students just parading around. Like Maryland's campus is huge. I I think the motherfuckers came from North Campus. North Campus is like a 15, 20 minute walk from South Campus. I don't know where it started, but I know it ended at South Campus with all of us just chanting Obama in the middle of the campus. Everybody was coming out their dorms. Well, not everybody, but I guess everybody who was for Obama coming out the dorms. And I will never fucking forget that moment. History has its eyes on us. Or if you don't want to be watched, history guys eyes on me. So you can doubt me. You can hate on me. You can say whatever the fuck you want. You can build me up. You can send me bread. It doesn't matter. The work's going to get done. You either with me or against me, ho. Because all I do is win, 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 win. (laughs) So that's that. Oh, that makes you feel like you can go out in this world and do whatever the fuck you want to do. Because all this shit is made up. All these motherfuckers, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Donald Trump, everybody sucking their assholes, even though these motherfuckers are on some fuck shit most of the time. If them bitches can do what the fuck they want, yeah, their daddy's got the money block. Fuck it. Figure it the fuck out. Get up in that camp and take that fucking money if you got to. Do what you got to do to make your vision reality. You got one life. Maybe. You probably, if you don't figure it out now, you're going to die and you come back in this bitch. You got to figure it out again. So that's where I'm at. This is, my last, this is my last radio on this planet. I'm going back to spirit after this. So I'm maximizing. As long as this shit don't burn, like the earth don't burn. I plan to be around for another the next 70, 90 years. We got science. And I'm taking care of myself. So, I'm going to end it with that. Thanks for your time. Again, like, subscribe, comment, share, and keep the vibes high. You get what you deserve out of this life. And if you get in shit that you feel like you don't deserve, as I've had to learn, it's 
built in character. All the animals.